At the 7th International Congress on Industrial and Applied Mathematics, Professor Chris Budd enlightened and entertained both adults and young people with his public lecture, Math in and Out of the Zoo. I'm going to try to answer the question, what do mathematicians actually do? <laughs> or to be more precise, what does a mathematician do when they're not in their office or at a math conference? And of course the answer is very simple, when a mathematician's not in their office or they're not at a conference, they're out there looking for math. So my message was that maths isn't something you do in the office, it's something that affects all of us in all of our lives. And the talk was an illustration of different applications of maths going round the different parts of the zoo. So I typed cute animals from the zoo into Google and it came up with this beautiful picture of baby pandas. And you might think, well, what's the math in this? Well, there's lots of, of this. I don't know quite how the pandas did it because there's one panda, there's another panda, here are two pandas, there's three pandas there, and of course what we have is the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people want to come to see what maths is really there for. We're 3,000 people at the conference. Why are we here? Are we just talking amongst ourselves? They have genuine interest to know what maths is and what it's about, so the talk was partly for them. But I also feel very strongly that you know, we, we are doing maths, we're being paid to do it, and, it, and it's right for us to go and to tell people, yeah, you are getting value for your money. This stuff really does make your life different. We're going to go to Amsterdam Zoo, and we're going to start in the aquarium. The problem that they were having in the zoo was that the fish were getting too hot. So what we tried to do was turn this kind of physical situation involving the fish into mathematics. In one amusing zoo tale, Professor Budd demonstrated how in a complex system like a zoo aquarium, math can save costs by proving that the simple solution is just as effective as more expensive approaches. So we solved it, and the answer was very, very simple. The best way to cool the fish down was to make the fan blow faster. <laughs> While math was able to provide an easy answer for Amsterdam's fish problem, Professor Budd demonstrated that mathematical approaches are often most needed when what seems like a common sense solution proves ineffective. The mother penguin is very, very good at producing a baby penguin. If you give a mother penguin an egg to incubate, she will produce a baby penguin from it. On the other hand, an incubator is very poor at producing penguins. If you put the egg into the incubator, it seems that over half the eggs did not hatch. Bristol Zoo thought that the eggs were being turned to even the temperature out, so all they had to do was give a nice warm um, temperature around the egg and all would be all right. But what this calculation shows is that after 20 minutes, the eggs are at a reasonable temperature anyway. Math is amazingly good at showing things that you, you didn't expect, that it sort of goes beyond common sense. Um, and, it, and it's very common that when you write down a formula, that formula has within it all sorts of extra information that you didn't expect to have in the first place. What you can do is then a lot more calculations which involve solving elasticity equations, Navier-Stokes equations. Those calculations showed very clearly, looking at the fluid mechanics inside the egg, that the reason the egg had to be turned was to disperse the nutrients and the waste matter. In addition to showing how math can be used to solve problems in the animal world, Professor Budd also demonstrated how a mathematical understanding of animal movement is similar to human crowd dynamics. People behave similarly in crowds to birds in flocks, but the difference is that they have attitude. Humans move around in crowds very much in the same way that animals move in flocks, so that when you move in a crowd, you adjust your behaviour depending on who's near you, who you can see, um, whether you're going to bump into people. The main difference between a human and an animal, of course, is that humans have intelligence so that we have some overall aim for where we want to go to, and that affects the crowds in a way that flocks are, um, it doesn't affect a flock. The goal of outreach events is to encourage public appreciation for the excitement and vitality of math, a goal that Professor Budd is passionate about, especially as it applies to younger audiences. My great mission in life is to go into schools and, and talk to children and, and, and enthuse them. M my experience of young people is, is that they actually like math at an early age and, and somehow later on they go off it a bit. And so if you can keep that enthusiasm going, um, then they will be the, the mathematicians and scientists of the future.